Hello everyone and welcome to the Division 3 February webinar. I am Louise McCleary, the Interim Vice President of Division 3, and today I'm joined by Bill Regan, Associate Director in Academic and Membership Affairs, and Ali Spungen, Associate Director of Division 3. On the next slide, you'll see the agenda that we'll cover in the next 30 minutes. We'll provide you updates from our virtual 2021 NCA convention. And key updates will be on championships, Division I sustainability, the NCA's campus violence policy, our inaugural Division III LGBTQ and Allies Recognition Award Program, highlights from our uh, keynote speaker, and of course, we'll give you an update on the name, image, and likeness proposal. The championship updates, all of you, I believe, have probably received at this point several communications that last week, our Division Three Administrative Committee was acting on behalf of our Management and President's Council. And at the recommendation of our Championships Committee, we made the very difficult decision to cancel winter championships. In the communications we've sent out, we have really laid out the decision timeline, the threshold rationale and the process, and I will provide a few. I'll cover that again during this webinar. Our championships committee had been really looking at what constituted a national championship back last summer. They had many, many conversations about it. And in August, they developed thresholds of what they thought needed to happen to have a national championship this year. And what they looked at is geographic diversity, participation numbers, conference automatic qualification. And those AQs were important because really three quarters of our brackets are typically filled by our conference AQs. So they established the thresholds as all of you know, we ended up canceling our fall championships. And then our championships committee really was monitoring what were we going to do with winter championships? They kept the councils apprised of their discussions and their monitoring. And really what they said and they had as a goal is let's make sure this is a membership decision. So they sent a survey out in December asking institutions what their plans were regarding winter championships. They knew though that many had not made that decision because their institutions were still working with local uh, health authorities to make the decision of when would it be safe to reopen their institutions and to return to play. So they followed up the December survey with a January declaration. It was sent on January 19th to every athletics director. The good news is that we had a 98% response rate. And what they were looking for in that declaration were for institutions to say, not only am I participating now or I plan to participate, but will I have, will I be able to meet the minimum contest to qualify for winter championships? When they received the responses back, what they determined and what they saw is that the participation numbers were much below the thresholds that had been established. And based on those low participation numbers, they made the re recommendation to our administrative committee to cancel championships. And so I, I wanted to give you that additional information regarding how they came to their decision. It was over many months, many hours of discussion, uh, and then the recommendation to the administrative committee to make that final decision. What the championships committee has been doing in addition to looking at winter championships is that they've really also now started to turn their attention to spring championships. And some of the recent actions that they have um, moved on, you see on the slide in front of you. So they've reduced the minimum contest for spring to 50%. They have already made a decision that spring brackets and field sizes for both team and individual are at 75%. So that's where it currently is. They continue to have those discussions. They've also been monitoring and adjusting spring selection dates. And if you did not see 
the information in the championships monthly uh, newsletter, it noted that they've already supported a one week selections delay for softball and baseball. And then what they're also doing is they made a decision that as long as conferences declare their intent to conduct spring sports with at least four core members and demonstrate a schedule that allows the automatic qualifier to meet minimum contest requirements, no waiver will be required if COVID related issues either cause the conference to fall below the four core member threshold or prevent the automatic qualifier from meeting the minimum contest requirements. And that's something very similar that was in place for our winter championships before we had to make that decision to cancel them. A, a few other things in terms of resources that you should know about. If you go to NCA.org and you go to our Division Three compliance page, you will see a COVID Q&A. Our championship staff has been working with our AMA staff and they have added specific questions regarding championships to that Q&A. Our championship staff on an association wide basis has recently released the return to championship guidelines. These guidelines were developed with our Sports Science Institute, Dr. Hainline, our COVID advisory group that includes independent medical experts and their general guidelines that are applicable to all sports and providing how you can move forward in this COVID world that we live in. Also, every institution in the association last week received an email about COVID testing for championships. And what it said in the email is that all rosters, both winter and spring, were due this Friday, February 12th. We've heard from many of you that that timeline was problematic. It would have been difficult to meet it. And what we've heard from our championship staff who's been working behind the scenes is that deadline will be extended for Division Three institutions for a couple weeks. Now, if you have your spring roster or you have some idea of what your spring roster may be, I recommend that you go ahead and input that information by the Friday deadline, knowing that you'll be able to update your roster and you'll also be able to manage it as you're moving forward. The rationale for having that deadline is we do have some championships starting in the coming weeks. And in terms of the technology, what we had heard um, from our COVID testing provider is it would be easier if all 1,100 institutions were submitting their information in a similar time frame. But I'm happy that our championship staff has been able to work with them to make sure that Division Three can receive an extension if needed. And then the last thing that the championships committee has been working very closely on is our spring championship sites, touching base with our predetermined hosts to make sure that they are still able to host and that they're able to follow the guidelines that are set up within the return to championship guidelines. And so that is something that has been ongoing uh, and that it will continue to be ongoing as we get closer to our spring championships. As you stated, a championship committee already supported a one week selections delay for softball and baseball. When will a decision be made on moving back the selection date for lacrosse? It's a great question, Allie. Uh, the championships committee uh, was meeting on a weekly basis. Uh, they just had meetings um, last week. I, my understanding is their next meeting is in early March, and I believe at that time they will be looking at other spring sports and selection dates. Second question from the chat, Louise. Uh, will required sports sponsorship for membership be reduced as championships requirements have been reduced? Uh, another good question. So uh, as mentioned, um, our membership committee is meeting February 24th and 25th, and this is one of the action items that's in front of them. Uh, as soon as they make a decision on that, 
Uh, we'll make sure to reach back out to the membership and let them know what that decision is uh, regarding the sports sponsorship for membership purposes. Uh, so I would say that um, some type of communication will come out uh, no later than early March. Uh, you may have heard some information about it, but during the virtual convention, both our Management Council and President's Council met and received this update regarding Division I sustainability. The Division I Board of Directors and the Division I Presidential Forum identified sustainability as a primary emphasis. And for many discussions, the pandemic accelerated that discussion. And so what the Division I Board has charged their presidential forum is to have a comprehensive review of sustainability within Division I. And what we're anticipating is that by this April, the presidential forum will give the Division I Board an initial report. The report will likely include some recommendations on short-term items like extending or making permanent relief provided in the past year due to COVID, as well as more technical regulatory changes to recruiting, student athlete eligibility and financial aid, and playing and practice seasons. For example, the number of contests. After that initial report, we anticipate that there'll be additional discussions with the Division I membership between this April and the following April, so over the next 12 months, and it will focus more on long term sustainability issues related to, again, financial concerns, membership requirements, legal fees and governance. And we anticipate Division One taking action possibly in April of 2022 or at the latest in August of 2022. And what Division One has said, it's very important for them as they go through this review over the next 12 to 16 months is to identify short term and long term action items. And so obviously everything I just mentioned has nothing to do with Division Two or Division Three. And yet Division One wants to make sure that both Division Two II and Division Three are kept apprised of these discussions in case any actions or possible actions come out that may have an impact on our divisions. Now, keep in mind, if there is a recommendation for an action that impacts Division Three, Division Three will have the final say in that. It's not as if our Division One colleagues will say, and, and this must happen. So keep that in mind, but this is an initial update. As we continue to hear more information that's provided to our councils, we'll make sure to give that information out to the membership. In April 2020, the NCAA Board of Governors expanded the association-wide policy on campus sexual violence to include individual accountability measures. This action is an opportunity for member schools to evaluate their prevention measures based on their campus policies, as well as state and federal laws. Additionally, the U.S. Department of Education, or DOE, released new Title IX regulations that became effective in August 2020. These new regulations raised several questions for the membership regarding how the association's expanded policy intersects with the new requirements of the DOE regulations. To fully serve the membership in fulfilling this annual policy requirement amidst COVID-19 challenges, and given the new DOE regulations, the Board of Governors directed the development of a membership task force to provide resources to assist members in developing implementation measures on campus. The task force includes members from all three divisions and will work to develop operational guidelines, best practices, and supporting documentation that campuses can use to implement the expanded policy. And with that task force, they'll develop the operational guidelines and best practices this summer. And then the expanded policy is affected with 2022-23 attestation requirements or May 2023. The work will enable member schools to use the resources developed to better prepare for the attestation requirements. Also, institutions are still required to attest by the deadline this May as well as May 2022. 
prior to the expanded policy taking effect with the May 2023 attestation. As a reminder, this year's Division III education session for the NCAA convention was on the campus sexual violence policy. It is available on NCAA.org and shares more information about the policy and educational best practices. That can also be found on our 2021 um, NCAA Division III convention resource webpage. As Louise previously mentioned, we were excited to have our inaugural LGBTQ and Allies Recognition Awards held virtually during this 2021 NSA convention. Um, our 2020 LGBTQ of the Year recipients were for the institution was Bridgewater State University. For administrator, coach, or staff, it was Hillary Arthur for Willamette University. And finally, our student athlete was Kenna Gilmore of Hamilton College. Um, 2021 Recognition Award nominations have opened in February, this February already. So please look at those nominations and get those in so we can have another great Recognition Awards. And for our keynote speaker that we had at um, NSA convention right before our business session, um, Lenore Billings Harris presented on turning barriers into bridges by disrupting bias to accelerate results. It was as we have highly diverse workforces, student population and community continues to grow, universities have a leadership role to model behaviors and dialogue that can assist campus leaders at all levels to understand, appreciate, and capitalize on differences as well as similarities. Um, enhancing inclusion practices helps leaders incorporate behaviors that improve the campus culture and attract, develop, and retain the best talent. So we hope you're able to attend and take away some of those great knowledge um, that Lenora shared with us um, during her keynote speaker. You can find her participant workbook is also located on NCA.org on the Division Three Convention resource page as well. Um, on the screen right now, you also see contact information for Lenora um, and you can find her via her website there. Um, the presentation provided a great platform for participants to discover how and why unconscious bias impacts decisions and daily interactions, and then how to strengthen cultural intelligence leading to positive relations in the office, in the classroom, and during campus events. So thank you for joining us, and then please look on our website for more information about her other speeches and availability. I will pass over the virtual microphone to Bill Regan from our AMA staff. Thank you, Ellie. And if we could just give a quick update on what has happened with the name, image, and likeness proposal. Uh, as many of you are aware at convention, the name, image, and likeness proposal was withdrawn by the sponsors, uh, which were the Division Three President's Council. Uh, it's important to note that it was just not Division Three, but all three divisions withdrew the proposal from consideration at this year's convention. The proposal was withdrawn after the National Office received a letter from the U.S. Department of Justice Antitrust Division regarding questions uh, of the proposal. Um, based on that letter, there were conversations with the Board of Governors, with the Division Three Management Council, as well as with our Student Athlete Advisory Council. Uh, based on recommendations from those groups, uh, the President's Council is elected to withdraw the proposal from consideration at this particular time at this convention. I will note that SAC certainly echoed or voiced their disappointment, but also voiced their support for the recommendation to withdraw the proposal at this time, given the current context of the Department of Justice letter. I'll also reinforce what the President's Council have said all throughout convention that they remain committed to the concept within the name, image, and likeness legislation and are committed to move forward as soon as it is, it is prudent. So where are we now? NCA leadership is engaging in conversations and beginning to establish meetings with the Department of Justice uh, in the hopes to discover uh, the issues to understand the issues noted in their letter, as well as to maybe to address, to appropriately address any of those specific issues. So once the Department of Justice concerns are understood and addressed, it's anticipated that the President's Council will begin to act on the proposal. 
Until then, it's difficult to say exactly the timing of this or exactly what will happen. So I think this is one of which we just take a wait and see to approach to see what happens with the proposal based on the conversations that are that the NSA leadership is now having at the federal level. I thank you for your time uh, this afternoon uh, or this morning, depending on where you are. Uh, and I thank my colleagues, Bill and Allie, for joining me uh, to provide these updates on this year's virtual uh, NCA convention. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Bye-bye.